Good evening, my non-existent viewers. It is I, the Derpasaurus, and this is the June 2024 Schizo Rambling. And as I stated in my uh, my community tab that I posted the other day, right after Memorial Day, I wanted to make a special like video for this day, June 1st, because yeah, I've been determined to make one Schizo Rambling on the first day of every month this year. Like it's 11:34 right now. I would have I wouldn't have waited this late to record this video, but like my uh, I I just got home. I got off work. Right, at like 9 o'clock-ish, because I have PM shifts that go from like 2 o'clock to 9 o'clock, roughly, so 7-hour shifts. And my mom is in town, like, she got an earlier flight. I, whatever, so, like, my mom has a, she's out in Denver nowadays, my uncle, right? And, uh, but she's a flight attendant for United Airlines, and she does fly out of Newark quite a bit. Well, you know, that's like the closest airport to my hometown here in New Jersey. It's like a 50-minute drive away from my dad's house. But uh, whenever she, you know, stays overnight in Newark, she stays at her friend Susan's place. So she really wanted to see me have a meal for dinner. So we made burgers at uh, her friend Susan's place. So yeah, I, I just got home from that. So that's why I haven't. I, 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 if I wasn't busy, if it wasn't, if I had a chiller day today, I guess like without as much going on, I would have recorded this video a little sooner. So this video is probably not going to go up until like, you guys probably aren't going to be able to watch that until June 2nd, you know, the next day, this, you know, tomorrow being Sunday. But yeah, I wanted to record this video tonight anyway, because like June 1st, it's going to be three years since like today has been three years since my first day of my old job. You know, my old... Because I've been at uh, Dogtopia, the chain I work for. Uh, they they have they have Dogtopias, like, all around the country. But different companies own different Dogtopias. I'm going to assume that the one for Collins, the one I used to work at, is locally owned. While the one I work at currently, that, like... My Union Dogtopia and the Westmont Dogtopia is owned by Red Barn, if anyone cares. But anyways, like, it's, it's been... Dog daycares, I mean, I guess, like, the pet world has been just much a part of my life as, you know, the wild world has. Because I've been going kind of back and forth between, like, uh, ever since I graduated from CSU, you know, working at dog daycares and interning at zoos. Because today, June 1st, I didn't get around to uploading the video until the 6th, like, right before Daily Act TV's birthday last year. Which, by the way, like, I've said in my Garfield... Uh, movie review, and I'll say it again here. I am planning a special, like, birthday uh, present for Daily Reacts. It's gonna be, like, a video. Again, I'm not going to specify what book it is, but I just picked it up from Barnes & Noble today. And it was pricey, but it was worth it. I got the uh, a particular director's cut of a certain graphic novel. I'm very excited to get my first impressions on it on Daily Reacts' birthday today. I mean, I mean, it's coming up on the 7th. Uh, this coming Friday, but I'm very excited to make that video, and I'm very excited this coming Tuesday, I'm gonna see, uh, I'm flying out to San Francisco with my very old friend Gotti from middle school, like, uh, Danny and Shane and Joe and I, and Daniel and I met him in, a uh, sixth, sixth grade. Yeah, he was, like, one of our best friends, and, like, uh, his family moved, their family, his family's Jewish, and he moved back to Israel that summer going to 8th grade. I haven't seen him in person, like, ever since. Like, we've been keeping in touch purely over email and Facebook and stuff like that. But, yeah, he's finally moving to America next year. Like, moving back to America, that is. And uh, he he's going to L.A. to pursue a career in filmmaking, which, again, we're both English majors, which is amazing. But he's kind of been, like, visiting different neighborhoods, and he's, uh... I'm going to be seeing him in San Francisco uh, this Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm going to bring my video camera and make a video with him, of course. And yeah, it's gonna be a great trip. It's just like June is just kind of like a big month because like I reviewed Across the Spider Verse last year. Like, uh, yeah, I, I I filmed that video on June first of last year, and that was the video that ended my YouTube hiatus and got me back to making videos on a regular basis. Which happy year anniversary to Across the Spider Verse that movie. Oh, it's that was my favorite movie of 2023, and um, I was happy that Boy and the Heron won the Oscar over like another Disney or Pixar movie. Like they usually do every year at the Oscars, but like I'm, uh, I'm still disappointed that like Across the Spider Verse didn't receive more Oscar nominations. I've been told because they the Academy loves to sort of just like 
shower the third and final installment in trilogies with accolades henceforth lord of the rings return of the king which i'm also very excited you know this coming weekend the 8th through the 10th cinemarks all around the country are playing uh you know the lord of the rings extended versions i saw return of the king's extended version the big screen uh last year uh like for its 20th anniversary they're playing at the regal cinemas right next to my uncle's house so i was like yeah what the heck it's my favorite movie of all time so i gotta see it on the big screen at least once in my life right i'm very blessed to say i've seen all five of my all-time favorite movies uh on the big screen at least once like i've seen uh the lion king that movie turns 30 years old very soon again june is gonna be a great month i know it i might do a special classic review for the lion king uh for its 30th anniversary this year Either that or, like, a, a like a live stream, like, my live review of it. You know, sort of like what I did with uh, the, the Tiger documentary I was posting on Disney Plus back on uh, on Earth Day. Which is funny because, like, I fell asleep on stream at the end. <laughs> and Dale, like, tried to call me. I was like, wake up, TVB, and I couldn't even answer the phone. I fell asleep on stream. <laughs> that was, oh, God, that was hilarious. But yeah, uh, Lion King was 30 years old. My family and I saw Lion King on the big screen. It was like a 3D re-release. And again, this was before Gotti left for Israel. I remember us being like, Oh, who's the monkey? Like, practicing our Timon impressions, Timon and Pumbaa impressions. Lions are Gotti's favorite animals, so like, I, uh, I sent him, like, at the zoos I've entered at that have lions. I've always sent him, like, photos of the lions there and stuff like that. And... <clears throat> And yeah, uh, so I've seen The Lion King in theaters at one time, and like, I saw Avengers and Avatar in theaters, because those weren't like, those were, at the time, they were brand spanking new releases, Avatar being in 2000, being released in 2009, and Avengers being released in 2012, respectively. But I only saw those two movies in theaters once, those two separate times. I didn't go to see them in theaters multiple times. But I have seen Jurassic Park on the big screen twice. The, which, you know, for its uh, 2013, you know, its 20th anniversary back then, uh, Nick and I, I he, Nick's been quite a few of my old gaming videos, and a few of my big rumbles, too. Yeah, that I used to make back in high school. Uh, those videos are really old, just, like, hit, like, you know, oldest videos and scroll through if you're interested in, like, how cringy of a teenager that I was. But, yeah, Nick and I, we saw the Jurassic Park 3D re-release back in 2013, and uh, my friend Emerand and I, uh, we, we saw a double feature for both the first Jurassic Park film and Jurassic World Dominion back when Dominion came out. Which, by the way, I've been thinking long and hard about it. It's been a very long time since I've watched any Jurassic Park sequels. Is, it, is Dominion still my second favorite out of all the Jurassic films? Uh, no, I would say, like, after, yeah, The Lost World, the second Jurassic Park film, is, like, definitely the franchise's, like, forgotten sequel it deserves, like, more praise than people would really give it. Because I remember, like, watching the heck out of it when I was a kid, even though I was really disturbed by, like, the extra violence that was in that Jurassic Park movie. But anyways, yeah, and I saw Return of the King on the big screen for the first time last year, but I still haven't seen Fellowship or uh, Two Towers on the big screen, so... Saturday and Sunday, thank God I get off work at 2 o'clock because, you know, these showings can be fairly early, you know, not late in the evenings, unfortunately. Hopefully I can, like, coax Danny and Shane into, like, driving over to, uh, like, picking, you know, the three of us up so we can do a uh, Maul's Dank Volume 3, like, Willow Ship of the Brook or something. Which, Danny and Shane, if you guys are watching this video right now, like, if, if you guys are too busy those days to do so, that's okay. But I think that would, because people have been, someone on Instagram has been asking me, like, oh, where's Maul's Dank Volume 3? And it's like, we haven't really exactly been in a rush to make it, but I feel like this weekend would be a good chance for us to do so. But yeah, three years ago, I, I again like I don't remember what day I started training at my old Dogatopia, but I do remember my first day actually being in the playroom with the dogs, on like you know being done with my computer training and being in the big dog room. It's like that was June first, which I think the first day of any month is a much more badass anniversary than like May twenty second or whenever it was. Like not that I totally care because like I. I remember going to my church's Bible study right after that uh, first day I had in the room with the dogs on June 1st, three years ago. I'd be like, yo, I finally got to be with the dogs today, and I got the scratch marks to prove it. Which, I mean, 
there were, it's funny seeing how different Dogtopias do things differently, because I was there for the 14 months, like I was part-time before I graduated from CSU, then, that was, that's the thing, it's like, I didn't, like, I didn't go on any dates my senior year of college. I mean, it's not that I didn't want to, but because I was really prioritizing, it's like, I don't care if COVID makes everything go back to being online or not, I just want to, like, bag by the grand, just move on my life, just crush my classes, and I got hired to that Dogtopia, uh, you know, right after that spring semester ended, so I was juggling my final summer class, where I was, well, how I met Emma, and we were lab partners in vertebrate biology. Like, juggling my new part-time job with my summer class and my last fall semester's worth of classes. Oh, man, I'm so happy I've gotten to see, look at, like, June 23rd is my anniversary of seeing Avenged Sevenfold uh, in Madison Square Garden with Falling Universe. And, you know, this coming November, uh, Dragon Force dropped a new song today called uh, A Draco's Tale or something. Yeah, and it's like it's like something straight out of Kingdom Rush, I swear. Uh, you know, that Eric and I saw them live on November 3rd, so it's like, oh, those two bands got me through so much at CSU. Like, you know, juggling my shift's Dogtopia with homework and studying. Yeah, that, that got me through some tough times. But yeah, after I graduated from CSU, I, I just, like, wanted to live out the rest of my lease, because subleasing the room that I had at the time was just not a good idea, in my opinion. I just wanted to, because I knew I'd have to go for unpaid internships after I leave, you know, to, in order to get my way into the zoo field. So I was like, I took as many shifts at that dog dog as I possibly could, like those last seven months I was in Fort Collins while looking at zoo internships on the side. And of course, eventually got the internship shy out Mountain Zoo. Then I, right after that, I left for Nebraska for the uh, Riverside Discovery Center. And then, you know, I was, this is why I took my hiatus last year. Like I, I was supposed to intern at the Wildlife Safari in Oregon, but they low key screwed me over big time. And I went back to Denver right before St. Patrick's Day. And like I said, I need to take a break from making YouTube videos for a while. Cause I really need to get my life straightened out after that but of course you know definitely happy those days are over like i do look back fondly on my hiatus for making youtube videos because during those two and a half months uh, i wasn't making videos i worked uh, for four weeks i worked at come set stay in uh, parker colorado it's like it's way different from like a doggy daycare like yeah it was pretty similar to dogtopia like the stuff i was doing there like, it's just like sitting or i spent a lot more time outside though than inside at that place i needed extra sunscreen I was the same thing as Dogtopia, just looking after dogs all day, but it wasn't like, there were more dogs there for boarding, which I did get one question on Facebook. Uh, it was from my dad, actually. Uh, he asked me, for people considering getting a dog, they'll need to use dog daycare. What type of dogs are best suited for daycare? Uh, that's a really difficult question. Basically, any dog that's, you know, altered and is, you know, I guess has been socialized before a breed is kind of irrelevant. Like, I've met, it's funny, uh, I will say this, I, I don't dislike any dog breed, they're just dogs I find overrated. Case in point, Golden Retrievers, because you'd be surprised by how many super frustrating Golden Retrievers you'll meet at these places. I'm telling you, like, there was this one Golden Retriever at my old place, and there's like three here at my new place that are just menaces. They tear up trash bags, they steal things off of counters, they spill water bowls, they'll pick the water bowl up and spill the water everywhere and just like make you chase after them for attention with the water bowl still in their mouths and they puncture holes in and they nibble on crates and they nibble on fire extinguishers even, I've seen it before and they'll eat poop off the floors like they're dung beetles in Africa just eating elephant shit in the savannas just ugh it's, and yeah, it's a lot of the job is cleaning. Like, nothing you'll do there is rocket science, but it's way more to it than just, like, playing with the doggies all day. Like, there's, you know, all the cleaning after pee and poo and, like, hair and vomit and dust and stuff like that. There's that, and there's, like, having to know dog signals, like, knowing when a dog doesn't want to play with our dog and the other dog's just not getting it. Like, the puppies that don't know boundaries. And they know how to break up scuffles and look for, like, signs of puppy warts and other medical conditions like that. There's, like, uh, wellness checks. And, you know, gotta keep the dogs entertained, too. If all the dogs are just doing is sitting around doing nothing, like, there's chalk, there's bubbles. I really like to, my new way of fucking with the front desk is writing their name out and saying, you know, Phil, like, front desk staff here likes some random animal. Like, I've done, Alita likes the uh, chickens. 
and she relieved me the other morning and she was like, oh, so I like chickens? Is that what this is? And then this earlier today, uh, I wrote, because, you know, my other coworker Vanessa was working in front desk, I wrote, Vanessa likes penguins. So I've been kind of going like a little bird spree lately. But yeah, as of now, like, I'm saying hell no to another internship. I, I think I'm, I, I've had interviews at zoos since this year started, but they all chose another can. It's like, I don't think it's my cover letters or my resume that they're really having a problem with. I think it's just, it's a really competitive field. So like, if even if someone has like, you know, a month's more experience than yours, they'll, they're gonna pick the other candidate over you. That's just how it rolls, unfortunately. Either that, or like I get, or just like my interviewing skills need more work, or I need to change the way I dress, or both, or all the above. Really, it's a you know, it's all just part of the grind. It'll happen eventually. I know it. I just gotta keep forging ahead, not get discouraged. And this is uh, some really big news for you viewers. You know, April and May were kind of stressful months for me this year. Not gonna lie. And every spring, so March, April, and May, is when the most, like, fuckery happens. Both a good kind and a bad kind. And the stuff that happens during these three months, like, the first quarter of the year, will really, like, set the catalyst for how the rest of the year is going to play out. Like, case in point, like, March of 2020, it's like, hey, I came back to CSU that January and those last two, like, normal months before COVID hit and made everything close. It's like, well, look where we've been ever since. And March and April of 2021, it was like, I guess, aside from, like, the end of, like, my second to last, fun, like, semester, I, I guess, I, not, not, I mean, aside, I made my, my friendship with Kenzie really started to blossom that semester. Like, we met that February, and we started hanging out a lot more in March and April that year, I suppose. That, I guess, uh, you know, I, I changed my habits quite a bit in a few ways. That was, like, my post breakup clarity I guess you know after being dumped in 2020 but uh anyways yeah I mean spring of 2022 oh definitely cause like January and February I was like scurrying around the AC website looking for internships for places and the like, zoos to intern at after my lease ended in Fort Collins you know trying to make something of myself be a zookeeper and be a man and like live my dreams of you know working with tigers and lions and hyenas and rhinos and elephants and creatures like that and I you know I got interviewed at the Cheyenne, for the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo right before St. Patrick's Day uh, March of 2022 and they accepted me that April and a whole lot of other crazy stuff happened from there and yeah I mean who knows where I'd be right now without that event happening in March and April and uh, March and April of last year well I was supposed to enter the zoo and work in which again you guys know how that went and uh, that's kind of, but you know, in retrospect, that was definitely a blessing in disguise because, like, hey, I entered the Utica Zoo last year and it took me all the way back out east. And things with my dad and I now are like the best they've ever been. And it's like, you know, life's been good, all things considered, the past 10 months. So it's like, and this year, uh, with all the extra work I've taken at, dog, at this new Dogtopia, I've decided to give up DoorDash. Like, I, uh, I stopped dashing, like, uh, right before, like, April 19th, that was my last dash, my last order, I think, was from Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I got sick of doing it, it's more for, like, my car's sake than anything else. Because I had to get new brakes back in April, which of those were not cheap. But in... In retrospect, like, within the past few months, I've only really been dashing on my days off from Dogtopia anyway. It's like, oh, why I keep dashing more than I have to? I already have a regular job that's, like, I don't need to do this, like, right after working on Dogtopia all day anymore. Like, you know, take some time, rest. Like, the money's not that important. Like, I was only dashing, like, during the days, like, on my days off. Or whenever they're, like, peak incentive pays hours. Cause that, that, that DoorDash throws you a bone once in a while. They'll like pay an extra $3 an hour during certain times. But yeah, I realized like, okay, I really want to be a zookeeper. I really want to publish a book at some point. Which, uh, you know, case in point, one of my, uh, I've, like I said, I'm going to do like a book review for Daily Rex TV as like, uh, the start of a book review at least as part of his birthday present. But uh, I really wanted to review books on my YouTube channel now. 
Not as often as I review movies, obviously, but I would like to review books. I really just want to spend... Because one of my hallmates, my junior at CSU, she actually published a sci-fi novel recently, and I've considered... I, I've really considered buying it and, like, reading it and reviewing it. I would prefer to, like, read, like, with a hands-on book, like, with the paper in my hands and everything. I would prefer, like, graphic novels or picture books. But I'll challenge myself to read, like, a regular novel. Like, hey, it, you don't need pictures to enjoy it, but it helps. I, it sounds kind of childish, but it's like books without pictures can be kind of difficult to sit down and read, too. I, I want to make picture books. Like, graphic novels are great. I, I love, uh, I grew up reading the hell out of, like, Captain Underpants and Dire Wibby Kid and Magic Treehouse and those books. And I grew up reading Bone because the illustrations really made the story just come to life. And I want to do the same thing in my writing. With the novel I started writing while I was interning at the Utica Zoo last year. Um, yeah, that's the thing, like, I... My time at Come Sets Day was basically sandwiched in between, like, my Nebraska internship at the Riverside Discovery Center and, you know, my upstate New York internship at the Utica Zoo last year. But, oh, man, I had the stupidest crush on one of my fellow female interns last summer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez. That was a fun summer being out in Utica. It was, like, old times in a weird sense, or not just with, like, because I was back out in Northeast instead of out west but like uh it reminded me a lot of my summer of 2018 when my hair was pink and i was living in the dorms with my summer class you know because i just changed my major to english and i wanted to get a head start on my english classes uh, that was my phone I just went off uh just wanted to see if text me really quick uh yeah yeah cool uh ne never mind yeah like it was just like that only instead of the summer classes i was pursuing something i like really 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 care about you know interning at a zoo and Making a nurturing for lions and uh, giving keeper chats for hyenas and making food for all the animals every day. And yeah, like I had an awesome roommate, uh, Mason, if you're watching this video. I miss you, man. I hope life is good. Same thing to you, Robert and Andrew and everyone else. I met in dorms, like the local college students and the other interns at other programs and the dining hall staff. Oh, man. Like I said in my uh, Sesame Street video I made the other day. Uh, I would watch a lot of Sesame Street while hanging out in dining halls and just watching the world go by. I forgot to say this in that video. I mentioned the uh, Gordon, you know, Roscoe Orman, that's the actor's name. Roscoe Orman's been on Sesame Street for like 50 years. Mad respect, my man. That's badass commitment. And also, like, uh, in the Good Birds Club episode, uh, Abby and Elmo, like, they find out about the bullies and how Big Bird is, like, being made fun of for his appearance. And Abby's like, oh, we gotta tell a grown-up. And Elmo's like, Elmo doesn't want to be a tattletale. And Abby's like, oh, but it's not tattling, it's helping. Big Bird's in trouble, and we, we need a grown-up to help him. Like, uh, Abby is a, a good friend of Big Bird, and it's like, I like how the episode establishes the differences between uh, tattling and helping. Because I, you know, Gotti and my other friends in middle school are being picked on a lot by the other kids. And, like, they would refuse to tell a teacher about it because they didn't want to get the reputation of being a tattletale. But it's like, no, tattletales, like, you see a kid is wearing a hat. It's like, yeah, okay, we're not supposed to wear hats in school, but, like, who cares? It's not really bothering anybody when you think about it. And it's like, hey, no hats in school, I'm telling you. Yeah. Like, that's being a tattletale. Like, it's, dude, fuck off. Like, mind your own business. Like, if a kid's going to wear a hat, that's that's his choice, not yours. Mind your own business. But if you see bullying going on, like you see kids insulting each other, like shoving each other in lockers, yeah, you step in and do something and tell the bullies, like, hey, back off, do what's right. I really like how Sesame Street, uh, <coughs> Sesame Street teaches that to kids. Sesame Street teaches a lot of things to kids. But yeah, I mean, like, Back to, like, overrated dog breeds. I find poodles and doodles are, like, overrated. Like, doodles, that's the thing. Like, uh, they checkmate doodle owners. Doodle's not even a real breed. It's just a butt. Like, they, they get pissed. And there's poodles and... Yeah, I mean, but there's really wonderful dogs of all breeds. There truly is. Like, yeah, there are some problematic retrievers that we work with, but there's just, like, London, who's a total princess, and you just want to cuddle her, like, every time you see her, because she's very gentle and sweet. And, yeah, it's so fun seeing, like, all the different dogs' personalities. But one thing that is, like, 
kind of whack about like working with pets as a scheduling. This is one thing I miss about Come Set Stay. Like, I took that job in Colorado because uh, at the time it's like, okay, well, God forbid I can't intern at a zoo this summer, which, lo and behold, I did. I went back to, you know, New Jersey after interning at the Utica Zoo all summer. But if I couldn't, if they, if no zoo had accepted me last year, I would have just stayed at Come Set Stay and just worked there as much as I could before heading off my next big zoo adventure. Yeah, I was only there for four weeks, which uh, my coworker Brett, shout out to you, man, by the way. I got a beer with him after work one day, and he's a Norse pagan, and I'm really fascinated by mythology and stuff like that, so he's a guy I learned quite a bit from last year. And he sees, like, a hell of a lot of different bands. He just saw MXPX, and I was like, Responsibility! What's that? Responsibility! Not quite yet! Responsibility! What's that? I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Oh, that song is such a banger, man. I love that NXPX song. But yeah, working at, with pets, it's a lot of fun. It's like, <clears throat> I've said it before in other videos, I'll say it again here. It is kind of like the retail and service of like the animal care world. Like Just like how I think everyone should try being a cashier or a waiter at least once in their life. Like work at a restaurant or a store and like be the person that's like in front of the cash register and making the money all all the time. I think anyone who wants to do anything animal related, whether it's like zookeeping or working at aquariums or educating people at museums or like being a vet or working in national parks or sanctuaries or literally anything that has to do with animals should give like dog daycares at least a shot. Eat, unless you're like allergic to cats or dogs, of course, because like the pet, the pet resort I was at last year did have cats. Not as many as the dogs, of course, but like it did have cats. And it's funny, I, <clears throat> I used to have really bad like cat and dog allergies, but cats were always worse. Nowadays, though, like when I, the worst thing that happens like around dogs all day is like sometimes my arms get itchy from petting them too much. But that's nothing like a little hot water and soap can't fix. Or, like, my eyes get all watery because they keep getting up in my face. Like, I don't let dogs look at my face, especially after all the poop eating I've seen at dog places. It was, it's, yeah, it gets, it gets grosser than we'd like to admit. But it's, it's all, it's all honest work. Rest in peace, the farmer dude, the meme, it was like, yo, it ain't much, but it's honest work. Yeah, he passed away, like, a year ago. I just had a Facebook memory about that the other day. Sorry, make this video. It's kind of a morbid note. <coughs> and then my throat is itchy. Itchy, itchy underwear. Itchy, itchy underwear. Tongue, uh oh. Tongue, uh oh. Uchi, uchi, come by ya. Uchi, uchi, come by ya. Ole, ole. Mali pa malu we. Mali pa malu we. Come on, come on, be safe. Come on, come on, come on, be safe. Ah, na 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 na, be safe. Ah, na 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 na, be safe. Ah, 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 be safe. A big belly up, 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 all the way this slush, not brother. Really gotta lose some weight. Now I feel like saying the last part again. That was a classic tune from a Stovie Club, my Lithuanian scout camp. Yeah, those were good times growing up. I feel bad about not going back and being like, you know, the Vadovas, like the counselor that I, I probably should be. But, you know, it's. I feel like I'm along more with animals, though, than with kids. Yeah, I'm just. I'm being a dick and sending it to my old friend Lucas from Stovigal. <laughs> that whole little song. And I, I started a shit storm. That's another thing, uh. 
But the reason why I quit DoorDash, I may or may not be a new editor for this really awesome YouTube channel called Extinct Zoo. And yeah, it's fun to argue with people in the comments section. It's like, hey, we're all fish because the closest uh, monorelatives to the first fishes that crawled out of the ocean in the water in the Devonian period, uh, <clears throat> the tetrapodomorphs, which gave rise to amphibians and reptiles and reptile, then birds and then, of course, mammals like us. Their closest monorelatives are the lobed fin fishes, so it's the coelacanth and the lungfishes. And we're actually, genetically speaking, more related to coelacanths and lungfishes than they are to literally all other fishes, which that to me is just crazy. And I'm sorry, I, I'm having a little bit of a snack attack. I got a bag of Skittles right here, and I'm gonna eat them into my microphone. Nah, I'm joking, I hate noisy eating, so I wouldn't do that to you guys. Ugh. Explore the rainbow, taste the rainbow. You guys are the best. Okay, one last little handful of Skittles and I'll just end the video here. It's well past 30 minutes. The last one was so short compared to my other Skizzle ramblings on May Day because I was like so exhausted after working all day. That's why I kept that video only like 14 minutes. I just want to make this one a little bit longer, but not, like, super long, I guess. To make a long story short, like, I've been really proud of all the things I've done in the past few years of my life. You know, the 2020s, despite it being a, it, through a pandemic, have been the best ones so far. And I'd say, as of now, like, 24... Like, I know the year is still fairly young. I don't want to judge 2024 just yet, but, like... Because it's only June. We still have like seven months to go, basically. But like 22 and 23's high points as of now have been higher than 24's high points. But at the same time, 24's low points have not been as low as 22 or 23's lows. If that makes any sense. Like everything's been kind of like on a steady level of progress this year. Like not like, yeah, it's been disappointing not getting a job at a zoo after like applying to so many different places. But hey, that's just like... It's just the card you're dealt, I guess. So just keep looking. You gotta keep looking and not get discouraged. And I wish the same to all of you. And yeah, I hope that everyone has a rock and roll summer. And don't forget to uh, eat your Skittles and subscribe if you're new here. And have a good night. Stay beastly.